So we are back on the YouTube yacht today. We've got our oldest with us out helping. She wants a new fish tank for some goldfish. You guys ever get the little goldfish at the fair and then of course they never last more than a week? Well, these have lasted a while. So we got to upgrade our fish tank. She wants a new one. So she's going to work for me today. We've got all these outer forms yet. A couple things up here. Listen, I could tell you or we could just work and show you. I think we're just going to work and show you. She's getting the weed burner down there so we can get a fire going. So most of the smaller stuff we're gonna burn. Somebody made the comment last time about burning that treated wood, not to breathe the smoke when you burn treated wood, but I wouldn't breathe any smoke regardless of what type of wood it is. Your lungs just aren't made for it, but it is good advice. Uh, the other thing is we're gonna have a lot of people mad that we're uh, burning this wood, but what do we do to strangers on the internet? We ignore them. We ignore them. Yeah, you're dang right we do. Side by side, I got like a mini sledgehammer. Can you grab that real quick for me? Thank you much. Now, I need to preface, preface you with something and learn how to say words. There's going to be honeycombing on this concrete. I want it to be rough. I want there to be some honeycombing. We're using a product called Cementol to coat all of this in and get the last final clean shape we want. I need that to be a little bit rough for that Cementol to adhere. So if you see honeycombing, it's normal. And even after saying that, people are still going to make a comment about vibrating it more. Just, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. It's fine. It's perfect. We like it. So I've already got all the screws out of all of these. We did that the other day. Should be able to just pull those out, give her the old gator roll, and get them to separate from that top piece. Most of these longer ones like this we will save and reuse. Oh, that's gonna bring the whole thing. Well, that's okay. Bring the impact. Looks like I missed some screws. So we managed to get those off all the way around. See what we're starting to look like around the front there. So the next step will be taking all the plywood and those two by sixes off so we can kind of see that final, well, close to that final step. Keep in mind, we're gonna take that cement all and uh, just kind of run in those big gaps in that area. 
when it's all said and done. But that'll have to wait till it warms up a little bit this spring. Mama wants to run to Owensboro today, and it is Saturday, and that sounds pretty good to me, so we're gonna call it quits. But for the ones that haven't been inside yet, we did not have any blowouts. Everything went really smoothly. You can see, if you've been washing in the past, it's always been kind of wet down here because, you know, open ceiling, but it's really drying out quite a bit and pretty fast. We've actually had quite a bit of rain since we've poured this. It's been drying out really nice. But no blowouts, everything held really good on the bottom side. Mama wanted to go to town yesterday afternoon, so we did, and we had a heck of a time. It was an awesome, awesome day. We're back out here. Let's see if we can finish getting the rest of this off, cleaned up and burnt. And then we got a little bit of a task I want to try to knock out through the woods here today as well. Staring at this brace forever, I'm just tired of being here. The order of operations here is now to get that 2x6 off and then the plywood should peel down from it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Remember we just got screws running up into here. I would much rather it just be frozen than muddy. Oh dear, it's slippery. You guys see that coming? I didn't, not fast enough anyway. Forms are gonna come off easy though, so we got that going for us. close to how I want it. All that little pitting and honeycombing that's in there, that'll give that cement all something to bite to whenever I finish that edge out. Not mad about that. Now hopefully, I should be able to beat down on these and it should kind of start to peel that plywood away for us. I do plan on saving the uncut pieces of 2x6 for some shelving I've been wanting to do in the pole barn. But the sections like that, where it's scored over halfway through, that's just going to get cut and burn. I have no use for that. I think it looks good. Oh, yes. Remember, we've been talking about this video and when we poured, the whole purpose of this foam was to keep the concrete in. We knew we would end up with this whenever we poured, pulled the forms. And that's exactly what we were looking for. We're a little rough on this edge here. Uh, that won't take much to clean up. And when we take that cemental finish in and we trowel through this, we feather that 45 in, and we feather that 45 in, and we come up, and we rub this edge out. It's going to look great. There's going to be a lot of doubters in the comments, and that's fine. Those are the people that don't understand the process or just, you know, like hating things. But for the ones that are loyal to the channel, stay tuned, stay subscribed. 
And come springtime when we finish this thing out, you're gonna see how awesome that looks. And I'm excited because that's, that's how I pictured it in my mind. And it's always a good feeling when your little brain plans turn into reality. When reality and your little brain plans match up, that always feels good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting the rest of this stern side off and then we'll just start working our way around. I'm a little nervous about that bow section though. I will be honest about that. I went back and watched the unedited the raw video, the whole pour to make sure I pulled up all the rebar and had everything where I wanted when I poured. There's one spot on the bow. I'm not sure if I got it. better move you up here so I don't knock you off the ladder. There you go, bud. Not bad. Not bad at all. And it is really, really looking cool. I can't wait to get that off. I'm just, I'm super nervous. I'm afraid there's gonna be some rebar peeking through when we do that, but so far, there hasn't been any rebar peeking through all the way around, which there shouldn't be. We did a pretty good job of pulling it, tying it, and having everything where it needed to be when we were pouring. But you just never know. There could be those stragglers you're not paying attention to. Next thing I need to do, I need to move this walkway I can get the rest of this form board off. These gloves are soaked. I'm soaked. Let's see. Yeah, we should be able to just drag the thing out onto the actual concrete now. Like so. Try not to sit down in this mud.
Everything's so much faster and easier when you're not on a ladder. All right, moment of truth. Get out, get that off there and see what she looks like. In case you were wondering, I have been getting several of these screws that were broken off, which means there's enough pressure on that form that it sheared those screws off. Most of them are coming out intact, but we have been getting a few broken off like that. Looks pretty dang awesome to me. I love it. Looks really good. And what I really love is there's no rebar poking through. I was convinced I forgot to pull up a piece right here. But I clearly got it because if I didn't have it, it would be, we'd see it right now. Oh man, it looks good. It looks really good. Tape did a really good job. All the way along here. Oh wow. Really looks good. Still got some tape hanging, but let's just go follow up on its own at some point. I'm convinced of it. So I'll just show you real quick because I know some people are gonna be wondering about it. That cement hole you can build out to four inches, which we won't have to get that crazy anywhere. But what I want you to imagine is this straight edge. It's gonna be finished in right along that, okay? Right along that straight edge. That'll all get filled in with that product. And then once there, we could just kind of feather it into that. And then it just gets like a skim coat on top to smooth everything out, and it'll look really nice. The bow is going to take the most amount of work because it's the most complicated, complicated part of the project. 
But once we get around to the sides, it really won't be too terrible. Nothing different than you would with stucco. You'll come through where you have little high spots like this. Well, you just take a rasp and you rasp that down smooth. You put your mesh on and where it's just flat like this, we just kind of skim it out. And right here along the sides where it's not too crazy, again, just kind of feathered into blend. Should turn out really nice. Yeah, maybe one day. I think it's gonna be really cool. I also have this idea where I wanna to try to make my own little miniature concrete stamp. It's like maybe three feet long. And then every so often, stamp, have to make it the negative of it, but stamp so it looked like there was rivet heads and plated steel and that kind of thing. I don't know, I might, I don't know if I'll get that crazy, but kind of seems like something I would do. And then same thing down here. We'll just feather it in and blend that all in. That lip will stay how the lip is. We don't do a tremendous amount of work as far as feathering that in. It's more about blending the wall into it. And then right where that is, imagine a straight edge. If the 2x4 is up there, from there to there. And then same thing, straight edge from there to there. Except we'll kind of put a little roll to it, just like it's on the back of it. I think it's going to look really sharp, and that's really hot. And, and super hot. I think it's going to look really sharp when it's all said and done, but we can't get to that until we get warmer temperatures, but not too warm. So probably sometime in the spring. There it is from the top side. That looks great. Somebody asked if backfill is next. Actually, all this gets pulled back. Where the waterproofing is, that's as high as the backfill goes. It all gets pulled back, and then we'll build a fake dock over to it. And that'll kind of get blended in right there. Framing is the next big step, but we're not going to get to the framing until sometime in March because we're going to up, save up a couple months worth of YouTube revenue because that's what funds this project. Save up a couple months of YouTube revenue so that we can hit the framing hard and have enough to, you know, be done with it whenever we start it. There are some low budget things we can do in the meantime just to keep it moving. We've got the pipe we could connect the boat to the septic tank, which is right there. We could go ahead and clear out a path with the backhoe down to the septic field. There's some little odds and ends like that that we could do that we will probably see in the future. Tomorrow I'm actually going out to my brother's at his abandoned hunting camp. We're going to rock that and do some work there. Not rock it. We're going to like, like rock it. Like, yeah, not rock it like truck and stone. Like, you'll figure it out. We were hoping it'd be dried up, but it ended up raining on us and just go be a muddy mess. But it should be a good time. I'm definitely excited about the framing, the next two levels. But I'm really excited that when we get to building this paddle wheel. That's it. That's all I got. Appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm going to stay out here a little bit longer and let this uh, simmer down.